Hello everyone, time for some more Enceladus play testing. This is episode 4, map 4. The next level that Manti made for the wide. We're still waiting for the secret level, by the way. Though I don't, I, I don't actually care what order it's done in. And, oh, I need to... I noticed my auto map options, I want them to be traditional. Anyways, this level has 142 enemies, not that many, and Manti maps hardly ever have many, but he sure knows how to use them. So, let's get started. Okay, light amp visor. Right off the fan and back, I'm really not a fan of light amps unless you're gonna use a pitch black area. They just make things look uglier in my opinion otherwise. But I don't even know if I have to get it at any point, it might just be a secret. Not saying they should never be used or anything of this sort. Got to watch them, demons. They will close your gaps much faster than in the original. There's some silent monster modifications in this episode, and by silent, I simply mean I simply mean that the monsters look exactly the same. But some of the behaviors are at least a little changed. And there's that UAC logo floor texture again. Which as I said I don't mind. But some of my commentators think it isn't the best necessarily. In fact some of my commentators don't think a lot of these textures aren't the prettiest looking and yet I don't mind them myself as Steve put it in his last comment they kind of give almost an acid trip feeling and I happen to enjoy that I'm guessing like a lot of stuff Monty does they'll be recipient of mixed reviews He's got his fans and he's got his dislikes. I know those no humans past this point doors are switch operated. Also, BFG. Of course, it might be easier seen than gotten. Looks almost like this is a conveyor of sorts. Too bad it's not boom compatible, so they can't be moving. Oh, Manti's actually being nice with just zombie men in the window. How much is that zombie in the window? It's definitely less than a shotgun. Oh. The style blue, I'm pretty sure I've seen that one before in map 3. Yeah, I've seen style blue and style red for style purple. I've seen Style yellow and style red, unless that's supposed to be style orange. I don't think I've actually seen this kind of style tan. I've seen the, the I've seen modified forms of the Doom Builder default kind of style tan. Like, this is a modified form of that. Hmm, looks like I got a 
I'm gonna have to raise a bridge to that exit, probably. Manti don't punish the kill yes now there's nothing to be had but a lift to get out. So I don't have any ammo, I'll take the ammo. Man, there's 44 monsters down pretty quickly. Just gotta find the next little bit of progression. Not there, that's the yellow door. Oh, there's a switch I neglected. It will pay not to neglect it. Hmm, that's a lot of dead marines there. That must be a... Very painful sack though. But it looks like it is where I got to go. Did he leave? Okay, it's actually not a pain sack though. I guess it's just the jibs on the floor because so for so for whatever reason. I don't know how so many marines died here, but a lot of marines died here, apparently. Like the conveyors, even if they can't actually be conveyors and limit removing. Well, I gotta be careful what barrels I shoot as to if they could interact with barrels too close to me. Hoping I get to travel the convey on this level, that would be so cool. I don't need a moving conveyor to travel along a conveyor. That reminded me though of the moving conveyor map 16 of Interception 2 or whatever level Asteroid Assault ended up being that was just released like this week. Nope, there's a rocket launcher. For some reason I want I don't want to destroy those barrels. I don't know if they're gonna become useful or not. Oh oh well I destroyed them. I guess I'll find out. Generally my policy not to reload unless I get really badly hurt or die. Okay, these are misaligned. The natural tiling dot is the best looking thing. Oh, it looks like I've got to hop aboard to the door. Yup, now it's my conveyo! It's too bad in Vanilla Doom that all the conveyors can only be broken. Well, I'm still restricted how far along it I can move though, I got to... Find the blue key to remove that blue gate down.
I don't think I was in there. That also... Yeah, but that's a dead end segment of the conveyor for now. Got a no human door here. And... Got a missing piece of the conveyor floor on the opposite side. There's a lot of there's a um, there's a lot of right angles on the east side of this map for Manti standouts. Just pointing. It's not a gameplay thing. Maybe he figured he'd actually experiment with a level that has more right angles in it. Okay, and now I can run into that style yellow or style orange, whatever it is, room. Style yellow orange, I guess, like, because I can't make up my mind. Oh yeah, they don't take too many rockets to drop. Bear one's out. Essentially changed to Hell Knights in this wad. It might pay to even just re them as a Hell Knight. If that was possible. But I think Manti's going for not using custom sprites. But I don't think there's any hard and fast written lore that you can't use... Hell Knights as a sprite, as a custom monster sprite in an Ultimate Doom episode. Okay, I'm gonna... Oh! I would say I'm gonna take that poison as a sign I shouldn't fall in there, and yet I wasn't careful enough with my jump. Going through a couple tone styles. I wonder what ride I'm gonna be dipping on. Well, none if the Keiko demons kill me first. No, it doesn't. Nope, it looks like the tone styles are actually guarding the blue key that'll give me more access to the conveyor. Grab the blue key. I only. It would. Help to not have the grades of the tone styles in the way when I'm fighting here. Of course, it also puts me closer to the monsters. Would not be a bad use here of the rockets I still have left. I actually like how this episode is less rocket oriented than a typical Monty Watch so far. I think it gives it its own distinctive flavor that Manti has tended to not really venture into so much in the past. Of course, diehard rock rocket fans will probably say nothing other than, What did you do with those rockets? This ain't what I ordered! I think, I think I found the door for all three keys. This little bell takes the red key. The blue key is used on the conveyor. And there was a yellow door somewhere around. Manti's usually pretty nice at looping you back around, so I'll just focus on finding the my way back onto the conveyor so I can enter the section that needs the blue key.
Yep. Zuki lets me proceed this way in the conveyor, which gives me a plasma gun first and foremost. Is that the first of the wide? It might be, or there might have been one in map three. I'm not sure. Uh oh. That's a terrible place to put barrels. Okay, so what do I do with barrels here? I guess I just avoid them, flip the switch, and get away. Because in that area, no matter where I shoot the barrels, they're gonna hurt me and probably kill me given I've only 9% health. Yup. Now I can get in this part of the conveyor. Will be interesting if there was a way to jump on it instead of just using a switch, but that might be a bit too complicated geometry. Whoa! There won't! But even at half health, just having it one top with no escape is, well. Can't afford any leeway at 9% health. I could already get into this area. But this area I could not already get into. And here's my... Better fight him fast in this confined space. I think probably a med kit would be fairer than a stim pack. Given that you're basically forced to be rushed by a... I mean, yes, you can evade if you're aware he's coming, but a blind player does not stand the chance of evading him, I don't think. So I think a med kit would be fair. You see, he will just come dashing right into your personal space. How much I see if I can dent him fast enough with my Yup. My plasma can dent him fast enough. Looks like I've opened some boxes up and can use some barrels. Come on, Jim. There. I specifically wanted that to be a jib kill, just because. I did. So those boxes have... Some of them have a stim pack in them. And now we go with our hit scan tables, but thankfully they're very visible. Nope, that's back towards the... From a gameplay standpoint, this is probably one of the most satisfied I've been by a Nicholas Manti Wad. I actually like how he he stepped outside his comfort zone and it isn't all rockets, rockets, rockets! Not that that isn't fun, but it's always nice to see some variety. I've always generally enjoyed Manti Wads, but never gonna complain when he offers something a little bit different. Whew. 
Oh! Oh! Well, I guess I had am glad I had enough ammo health for that. That was a jump scare moment. Now we can finally take the conveyor back to the the eastern side of the level into an area that we saw from the beginning but haven't explored yet. Okay, these are misaligned. Which in my opinion there's really no reason to do that unless you're going for 1994. Okay, we're giving our first Big, big dose of rockets in the wide here. I wonder if we're gonna find our first boss master. 50 rockets and 200 cells is completely unheard of in this wide so far. It's not even close. But we're also nearing the halfway point. So. Maybe it's about time we hear that loud roar. Well, of course, he's gonna let me grab the key first. And there comes not just one loud roar, but two of them! Bells of fun with the Cyber Demon. I don't know if Cyber Demon's health has been changed in this or not. But like that wasn't a boss account of being telegraphed. If you didn't recognize that as the telegraphing of a boss encounter, then I don't know what you would recognize as the telegraphing of a boss encounter. But given it's the first one in the wide and it's a double cyber demon at that, I don't mind the pretty heavy telegraphing pout. Sort of like, be warned, there's one coming. Many a contain, many a no save, no death players are probably gonna eat rocket steel and die to them. Or not necessarily eat rockets, but fail to stay far enough away on the accounts of splash damage. Hoping this wide may be full once will actually make sure the boss encounters maintain variety throughout. It should be easier to do in 9 levels than in 32. That was eventually one of the shortcomings of mass extinction in my opinion. Although to to Nate to Manti's grant it took until the last episode for it to really happen. So it's not like it was an issue plaguing the entire world. And it's not like there won't slight variations. Sometimes you're the how do version of a previous encounter. Yep, this kind of lift is precisely to make sure that those cyber demons are dead before you try to leave. It also looks like we don't get out, we don't leave the way we came. I'll use my spell rockets for a little while, but maybe save some spells as well. I'm 
finally we can... Oh, now that is... Nicole, that not what I expected. Very nice surprise to reach the exit. I expected just a bridge. That was certainly a very nice surprise. Now I know why there was a gap for the exit because that ain't no ordinary bridge. That cherry tomato counts for only one out of three monsters I missed, but I'm gonna guess I'm done with the level. And well, nice le good level. I didn't even really notice in the gameplay itself the fact that there were perhaps more right angles, so it seemed dumb well enough. Maybe a few questions with the textures, but that's almost how for the course and they don't really bother me. Maybe a tiny bit easier of a time than I had in episode 4 map 3, but certainly not like it was too easy. One, one or two more shotgunners in one of the open areas certainly wouldn't make it be too hard, but it's a fine balance. Fun map, and I look forward to more, and if you enjoyed this video or my videos in general, please feel free and welcome to comment. I always appreciate them much, and... You are feel free to you are free to request, especially for play testing. I do take them, not exclusively for play testing though necessarily. And should be a sublink in the video in the description, and also a link to some other playlists in the description. Kakon one signing off here.